Coming up next on Hawaii Now, federal support helps to provide permanent protection of more than 3,700 acres of land in Honolulu's Moanalua Valley. A new training center for carpenters is going up, another sign that legislation authored by Congressman Abercrombie is helping to boost construction and the local economy. The National Guard Association of the United States honors the congressman's work on veterans' issues, as well as his efforts to improve the quality of life for Guard personnel in Hawaii and across the country. And the Congressional Arts Competition for Hawaii High School students gets underway, an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C. is one of the prizes. This is Hawaii Now with Congressman Neil Abercrombie. Moanalua Valley may be a blur to most people zipping by in their cars while driving over Red Hill on H1 Freeway. But beyond the homes and golf course that stretch along part of the valley lies a place that's being preserved for its natural and historical treasures. More than 3,700 acres of the valley has been dedicated for permanent protection through the work of a community partnership which includes Hawaii's Congressional Delegation and the Trust for Public Land, or TPL, a national nonprofit land conservation organization. The Trust's Hawaiian Islands Program Director says dedication of the land will protect the area's natural treasures for future generations. She also says the rich history of the Hawaiian family that lived in and continues to care for the area will be preserved. There's so many stories about what used to be. You know, hey, this used to be where King's Bakery used to be. <laughs> or, oh, that's where the Okazu used to be. Or that's where I used to fish. Or that's where my auntie took me swimming. Um, it is so fitting that um, on this occasion to mark that there aren't going to be any more stories about what used to be here. That in fact, you know, that this valley will be here in perpetuity and that the Ohana can look back at this and not say, this used to be where the Elopai used, you know, was, or this used to be where my family used to gather plants for La'au Lapa'au. Monolua is known as a dwelling place of the supernatural beings. My family were caretakers of all these supernatural things. The Kona'iki fish of Monolua is the mullet. This is very sacred land, and I'm so glad that um, the DLNR and the Trust for Public Lands has partnered, along with the military, to care for this aina. This is where the sacred chiefs of old, the kings and queens, are all buried. And I'm here to steward this place. The continuity of stewardship never ceased in my family. Before me was my dad, his mother, their mothers, and so forth from the beginning. And it's so amazing today, this is my fourth year in celebration of stewarding this place, in the very discreet. And um, yesterday's ceremony, we had a personal family ceremony up in a valley to appease all the ones that are resting here and for everybody's protection as we move forward um, to educate for the people of Hawaii. Kamana Nui and Kamana Iki Valleys is the traditional name of Moanalua Valley, once considered as the route for the H3 freeway, which was eventually built in nearby Halava Valley. TPL also notes the valleys have also been threatened by residential development for two decades. TPL says the valleys contain five distinct forest types and more than nine miles of streams. The native forest is a habitat for endangered plants and animals, including the Elapayo forest bird. The last sighting of the Oahu creeper, or O'o, occurred in the valleys, which is the home to several culturally important sites, including a stone carved with unique petroglyphs found nowhere else in Hawaii. The partnership that's permanently protecting the valleys involves TPL, Hawaii's congressional delegation, state and federal agencies including the Army, and landowner Damon Estate. Congressman Neil Abercrombie says the effort was helped by the positions of Hawaii's congressional delegation on key committees in the House and Senate. Uh, fortuitously, I'm able to serve on both committees that that uh, have the opportunity to participate uh, with all those in the, in, the, in the state and foundations and, 
and all the other groups and individuals associated here. The Natural Resources Committee has jurisdiction of U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and of course, uh, the uh, you know, working with Colonel Killian and all the others in the Army and the Armed Services Committee. Permanent protection of the land is a result of negotiations between TPL and Damon Estate on a $5.5 million purchase price. Funds for the purchase came from federal and state sources. That involved an Endangered Species Conservation Fund at the federal government's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the U.S. Department of Defense's Army Compatible Use Buffer Program. The buffer program enables the Army to help communities to protect endangered species and to support local planning and conservation efforts. The valleys will be open to the public for hiking, hunting, preservation work, and education. The back of the valleys will be a wildlife preserve. What I want to do today is say thank you, uh, particularly from the federal side to Dan Inouye. One of the first things that he indicated when the possibilities uh, for this combination of resources being put together was uh, discussed, is that our delegation would commit ourselves, and he mentioned to me in terms of the, the partnership that we have in the delegation, that I would be able to utilize my, my position on the Resources Committee in the House to work together under his leadership to accomplish this. In that context, the Senator and I and Senator Akaka, by virtue of, of his being on the Armed Services Committee, uh, have worked with particularly the Army, but with the military in general, to try and make certain that environmentally speaking, that the military was in the leadership position, not following, but in the leadership position of seeing to it that our natural resources were protected, and most particularly that the, uh, that the environment uh, particularly in terms of the creatures and the flora and fauna of Hawaii, uh, were not just protected but nurtured. And so the buffer program that's, that's been mentioned may be something that we think we know about, but it has particular uh, a keen reference to that idea of trying to work with the military to see to it that the, that the environment is enhanced, not just protected. We have that buffer program operating right now in Kauai. Uh, we would not be able to utilize the, the uh, uh, Barking Sands uh, activities, the, the possibilities for Barking Sands, particularly for the Pacific in the 21st century, if it was not for that buffer program. We couldn't have done things at Pupakea if we had not had the same program in operation, and we most certainly would not have been able to do it today. Eight months prior to this day, Congressman Abercrombie represented the congressional delegation at another dedication ceremony on Oahu's North Shore. That gathering celebrated the permanent protection of an area called Pupukea Palmalu. It's a 1,200-acre coastal property that serves as a scenic backdrop for international surf contests. That event culminated a move to protect the land that began in the late 1980s when plans first surfaced for a residential development in the area. One of the less known aspects of the Department of Defense is its, is its commitment uh, to seeing to it that land gets preserved. We're able to take advantage of that here. Count on us to be able to work together, federal, state, county, nonprofit groups and individuals everywhere in the community to make sure that we understand that the language of this land represented in the original prayer, in the original Oli, the language of this land will be the language that we will speak, not just to ourselves, but to generations to come. A public-private partnership involving TPL eventually came together and provided the support that was needed to purchase that land with local, state, and federal funds. The Army's buffer program, again, was a key to the Pupukea Palmalu land purchase. The author of all of that, not just here in Hawaii, but across the nation, in terms of environmental protection and enhancement, is Senator Inouye, and is an honor for me today to not just mention that fact to you as if this was the first time you ever heard anything that could be attributed to Dan Inouye, but to say to you that that kind of leadership is something that I think uh, more than ever today uh, is not only needed but manifests itself uh, in what is taking place today. This dedication would not be possible without it, 
and it's an honor for me to be here with him today to acknowledge it. Um, I just hope and pray that we do take care of what we have left because this place is very, very special. Come on, Anui, extraordinary powers. Come on, Iki, subtle but strong, our brothers and sisters. The waters that come out of Come on, Anui is the waters of the Wahini. The waters coming out of Come on, Iki is the water of Kane. When they do meet, they become the water of life. And in fact, this valley will continue for future generations, and it won't be any more stories about what it used to be. <laughs> Early evening reception at the Bankers Club high atop the First Hawaiian Bank building in downtown Honolulu is celebrating the start of the annual Congressional Arts Competition. The nationwide event was started by the Congressional Arts Caucus in the U.S. House years ago to promote art in our high schools. The competition has been growing in Hawaii. It's uh, always something that I, I feel very, very strongly about in the sense that nothing gives me greater satisfaction than to be the congressional sponsor for the arts competition. Congressman Abercrombie is the honorary chairman of the first congressional districts contest. The top winner gets a trip to Washington, D.C. to attend a reception that will honor winners from all congressional districts this summer. I'm constantly uh, reminded of the talent that's in this state when I see the results of the work that's been posted. The reception is also a time to thank students, teachers, and sponsors. Abercrombie says the sponsors have returned each year with continued support of the competition. And the reason that they repeat uh, doing it is because they understand and, and experience the thrill of seeing someone's work actually displayed for others to see. And not only see, but experience. The sponsors are especially crucial because they cover the cost of the competition, from framing the winning artwork to sending Hawaii's top winner to the nation's capital. We use our donors to do all of that, to send that, uh, the final winner up to Washington, D.C., provide them with a week of um, education and learning up in Washington, D.C. Last year's overall winner was Kenori Quay of the University of Hawaii Laboratory School. Um, my trip was, it was really amazing because you got to see a lot of the historical um, monuments and stuff, all of, the, all of the museums. So I think for me that was the best part. And of course the, the art competition was great too. Last year's event was at uh, Honolulu Hale and there was uh, 183 pieces of art. Um, it was a very nice event. Everything went off very well. We had about prize. We had prizes for um, probably about ten prizes, and they ranged from a trip to D.C. to visit D.C., um, see their art place in uh, the capital. Um, some kids won iPods, trips to the outer islands. Um, the teacher, the winning student, also had their teacher go with them to Washington D.C. and. Uh, Everybody wins, even the kids that, that aren't placed come out with a goodie bag and they get a bunch of other things donated by companies and sponsors. What are those two categories that kids can submit their artwork to? Photography and 2D art. We don't accept any three dimensional pieces because it's too hard to hang in the Capitol. But uh, it, it ranges from about, we go by 28 by 28 is the largest the piece of the art can be. Um, and you can do whatever your imagination allows you to do on 2D art or in photography. First of all, I want to say thank you, Alan, for uh, letting us set up over here. You uh, are second year in a row, and it's a, it's a beautiful venue. We appreciate well, it. You know, it's always our pleasure to 
assist this, especially this event, which is art and art is wonderful for the kids. Well, like um, Oceanet, we're a defense contractor. We uh, have a presence out here in Hawaii of probably 800 total people. We have sites out at um, Schofield, Lululei, um, shipyards, we're big presence in the shipyards. We do all the surface ship repair. Uh, out at um, Kailua and, and here in this building. Uh, Pipeline is a company that uh, does micro-scale thermal solutions. We uh, are one of the few companies in the world that can cool uh, laptop computers with liquid cooling systems. Well, Pipeline, uh, one of our missions is to keep talent in Hawaii. And uh, as, as the only micro-scale company doing thermal work in Hawaii, we've been able to uh, keep engineers uh, from U University of Hawaii here. And uh, we also want to support the community in arts and uh, keep, uh, keep our, our uh, artistic talent as well as our engineering talent uh, at home and uh, working for the state of Hawaii. What does Referentia do? Uh, we're an advanced technology company, do a lot of software engineering for uh, research and development for the Defense Department. Uh, we work in three major areas, uh, computer, command control, communications and computers, and intelligence called C4I for the military and also um, advanced technology solutions like modeling and simulation, um, uh, advanced networking capabilities, uh, things like that. We actually started on this, um, uh, it's, this is our second year, I, I think, and uh, we heard about it from, from Ian, who's been a, done a great job of catalyzing the local tech community around uh, events like this. Um, you know, the arts is a really important part of creativity, and creativity nurtures innovation, and innovation you know, fosters sustainability. Pukua Scientific is a house that uh, basically does pattern recognition solutions. So what we do is we take, you know, a lot of data that's kind of chaotic and, and you know, it looks confusing, confusing and provide, you know, some algorithms that can make sense of it to some potential users who can use that data now to be useful in their daily lives or, you know, help solutions for the uh, the military or to analyze you know what's going on in the world. I was a, a past winner of um, the competition and um, and it was you know very impactful on my life so I think it's it's really good for for the students coming up these days. Uh, you know we always like to find different ways we can give back to the community whether it's through um, uh, the projects that we do with the with the schools to the DOE or directly through the schools themselves and this is just another uh, another route that you know we we saw that we could help give back to the students. HIPAA is the Hawaii Institute for, non for Public Affairs. It's a nonprofit uh, advocacy group for do-gooder type things, um, sustainability, uh, the technology industry, um, and artwork. HIPAA believes very strongly in the role of the civic life. They believe that people should be you know well-rounded productive citizens and that includes things like artwork. To learn more, visit the competition's website at congressionalartshawaii.org. This is Hawaii Now with Congressman Neil Abercrombie. Congressman Neil Abercrombie is among the dignitaries invited to a groundbreaking ceremony for a new Hawaii Carpenters Union training center in Kapolei Business Park. They're using o'o sticks, traditional Hawaiian digging implements, to break the ground. Wow, you know, it's one thing to say 56,000 square feet and so on, but you actually see the space. This is tremendous. The union says the ceremony marks the beginning of a new era for Local 745. For the first time in its history, the union will own a facility to support all training programs. Having our own training center has been a dream of the union for many years. But it was only made possible through the wonderful cooperation we have with our signatory contractors and trustees. You know, by working with, as a team with our contractors, we've accomplished a lot of great things in the past, and we're going to continue to build on that relationship uh, in the years to come. When the center is completed, it's going to tremendously enhance uh, the, the existing training programs we have through the community colleges statewide, where we have involved more than 2,000 registered apprentices. Um, it, it will not only uh, help us to facilitate training of new apprentices and retraining and uptraining of existing journeymen, but it'll also help us uh, effectively respond quickly to changing market conditions and innovations 
uh, that come to our industry. The $15 million training center will be a three-story building with more than 56,000 square feet of space to support classroom instruction and hands-on training for apprentices and journey-level workers. The center will also include multi-purpose rooms and accommodations for meetings, workshops and large functions. Something that will surely outlive me and, and will benefit our industry big time. And it's, it's uh, through the efforts and the vision of people, the labor people who are on Takeda especially, it's, it's the, the leaders within the construction industry on the uh, management side that have helped uh, agree and, and foresee the needs that are coming up in the future. And we really are excited that we are going to have a facility of this stature. As Ron Takeda noted, it's a facility that will augment existing vocational education programs in Hawaii's community colleges. Congressman Abercrombie has been a strong supporter of efforts by Honolulu Community College Chancellor Ramsey Peterson to strengthen the apprenticeship training program for building and construction trades. I mean, what a commitment this is by everybody, in uh, the financial institutions, by the schools. I was talking to Ramsey Peterson. Uh, this is a compliment, a complementary feature to what is already being done at HCC and elsewhere because we have confidence in the future. We are, we are not resting on our laurels. laurels. We are going to be out there working together in government and in business and in labor to make sure that this state stays prosperous. A strong increase in military housing construction in recent years has increased the need for more carpenters in Hawaii. That's a result of Congressman Abercrombie, who sponsored federal legislation in 1996 that has led to the current boon in military housing projects worth billions of dollars in construction and business. The legislation made it possible for public-private partnerships to build the projects with private investments rather than federal dollars. The projects will build, renovate, and maintain more than 16,000 rental homes over the next 50 years for military families living on bases in Hawaii. The completed housing units are helping to address the shortage of affordable rental housing for local residents by alleviating the competition between civilian and military families for off-base rental housing. And I can assure you, and I pledge to you, as long as I have anything to say about it, you can count on me, you can count on our delegation to work with you to see that recession is a word that disappears out of the language of Hawaii and prosperity is a word that's going to take first and foremost prominence. Congressman Abercrombie's legislation has boosted the local economy and the new training center will ensure that a trained and qualified workforce is ready to do the job. National Guard Association of the United States has awarded Congressman Neil Abercrombie one of its top honors, the Charles Dick Medal of Merit, for his unparalleled support of the Hawaii National Guard and the U.S. military. How appropriate for the Hawaii Army and the Air National Guard to have a friend like Congressman Neil Abercrombie in charge of the Air Land Committee. Hawaii's Adjutant General, Major General Robert Lee, presented the this award to Abercrombie in Honolulu during a ceremony hosted by the association's Hawaii chapter. It's a nonpartisan organization representing nearly 45,000 current and former Army and Air National Guard officers nationwide. It was formed in 1878 with the goal of obtaining better equipment, standardized training, and a more combat-ready force by working with Congress. Lee said Abercrombie's legacy to the Guard includes his efforts dating back to 1998. That's when the congressman was the senior Democrat on the House Armed Services Military Personnel Subcommittee. People were saying, well, what about America's promise to the veterans? You told us you'd take care of us until we hit, the, hit, hit our grave. To keep the nation's promise, Abercrombie authored legislation that made comprehensive improvements to the military health care system, or TRICARE, for active duty military personnel, their families, and military retirees in Hawaii and around the world. Congressman Abercrombie did that, which was getting TRICARE 
after retirement. General Lee called Abercrombie to the stage while invoking the name of another winner of the Charles Dick Medal of Merit, a late congressman who was credited for modernizing the GI Bill in 1984 for the nation's volunteer force by adding education benefits for members of the National Guard and Reserve. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm welcome for the Sonny Montgomery of the Pacific, <laughs> Congressman New Abercrombie. Oh, the Medal of Merit is named in honor of Major General Charles Dick, a former president of the National Guard Association of the United States, adjutant general of the Ohio National Guard, and later a congressman and U.S. senator. He introduced legislation in the early 1900s that was credited with establishing the modern National Guard. Because it, if anything is true about the Guard and Reserve, particularly in these times of great stress, when the Guard and Reserve are being called upon to do things and to sacrifice in ways never before undertaken in the history of the United States. The Guard now finds itself in unprecedented times. And believe me, believe me, I think very hard about it every day. Every committee in the Congress is important. Financial services, if you're facing foreclosure, let me tell you, you pay a lot of attention to what Barney Frank and the financial services committees are undertaking. Judiciary, foreign affairs, all very important. But only one committee deals with life and death issues every single day, and that's the Armed Services Committee. The Armed Services Committee, the decisions we make there, affect people's lives. The award to Abercrombie says the congressman repeatedly sponsored legislation related to veterans, homeland security, defense, and the military. The award says Abercrombie used his seniority as a member of the House Armed Services Committee to support initiatives to improve the quality of life for guardsmen. The award goes on to say, as chairman of the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Air and Land Forces, he maintains critical oversight responsibilities for U.S. Army and Air Force procurement and research and development, and manages the same efforts for the National Guard, seeking to improve their readiness. This award is a reminder to me of my obligation and my duty, which is to act on the faith and trust that's been placed in me. And I reach out to you. As a member of Congress making these decisions, I reach out to you and place my faith and trust in you as all the people of this state and because of the situation they all the people of this country do in the Guard. This is the citizen's Guard. This is the expression of a free people. This is the talent in the room. I salute you and I salute the talent in this room. Mahalo.